welcome to another Passive Life video. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into Aptera's range. How is it calculated? How does it relate to charge? And how do we expect it to change in different regions throughout the world? The Aptera can produce around 4,000 watt hours of energy per day from its 700 watt panels and uses around 100 watt hours per mile, hence the maximum range of 40 miles of charge per day in the sunny parts of the world. So Aptera's range is based on the EPA test cycle. This is an American standard that's designed to simulate how vehicles are used on a daily basis. The EPA cycle is generally considered to be about 11% more accurate than the WLTP cycle, and it's split into two different tests one to simulate city scenarios and the second to simulate highway driving. The city scenario involves an 11 mile drive on a treadmill for about 21.2 mile per hour average speed, that's 34.1 kilometers an hour. The highway drive on the other hand covers about a distance of 10.26 miles, that's 16.45 kilometers and has an average speed of 48.3 miles per hour or 77.7 kilometers per hour with a maximum speed of about 60 miles per hour or 97 kilometers per hour. What's very encouraging for Aptera fans is that according to Edmunds.com, most EV vehicles achieve their EPA range or greater. The only exceptions being Tesla vehicles. So about 70% of the vehicles tested by Edmunds.com come in above their EPA estimated range. If you take Tesla out of the equation, then we get 92% of all vehicles tested by Edmunds.com come in above this EPA range. So it's looking very likely that Aptera is going to achieve their range or greater. Throw in Aptera's extreme aerodynamic efficiency and we should have a fairly reliable prediction. On the flip side, car reviewers often subject cars to their own less scientific tests and these often show the range to be slightly less than the claimed range. It must be said however that car enthusiasts are not exactly renowned for driving slowly. But again, in theory, the super aerodynamic efficiency of Aptera should benefit it in this regard as it should be able to move at higher speeds much more efficiently than other cars in its class. An interesting side note here is that the basic Tesla Model 3 is claimed to have a WLTP range of 491 kilometers, but with a very specific 20 degrees Celsius outside temperature so that no heating or cooling is required. But technically they're not turned off either. Under normal real world testing conditions, it's unlikely ever to achieve this perfect optimum condition. So Tesla continuously shoot themselves in the foot because they rarely hit their claimed maximum range. Other manufacturers seem to take these factors into account and their acclaimed ranges also offer a bit of buffer, which means they can hit them. It would be wise for Aptera to also build in some buffer, especially when they're claiming such high ranges, because let's be honest, people are gonna test this as soon as they get this vehicle. So what about never charge? Aptera uses lab simulated tests to make range assessments of their vehicle, but also to improve the efficiency of the design. The never charge concept is a major selling point for the company, so it's critical that they actually achieve this potential. As Aptera has pointed out, however, the goal of never charge technology is not a one size fits all, as that would be almost impossible to achieve for customers who travel long distances or who live in the very far north. Instead, their aim is at the average user. So how far does the average user commute? The average US user travels about 16 miles to work each way, so 32 miles or 51.5 kilometers in total. The EU average is just over 18 miles or 29 kilometers in total, and that's what I'll be using for most of my comparisons today. According to the Aptera website, this means that the never charge idea is possible for the average US user in the States, but only on the West Coast, where yearly sunlight hours are much greater than in the rest of the US. Presumably, this is also using the 1000 mile max PV variant of the Aptera to provide some additional buffer during the winter months. So does this mean the never charge will not work for most people? No, it doesn't mean that, but it is very sensitive to daily commuter range. According to Aptera's website, anyone traveling less than 20 miles in total per day should be able to achieve never charge. And because 20 miles is further than the EU average commuter distance, most people, in the EU at least, should not need to charge their Aptera, providing they have the longest range version with the maximum PV. This claim, however, like Tesla's earlier, should be taken with a pinch of salt as it seems to be based on average yearly use and optimal conditions. For me personally, I estimate I live in the zone three region and that will mean recharging an Aptera two to three times per year. 
based on my commuter distance. So how does Aptera's range compare to a normal EV or an ICE vehicle? To show the difference, I've compared two of the most important factors, the daily range and the cost. This data is based on the average EU commute distance, but the US data could also be substituted in with a very similar result. So if we look at it in chart format, we can get a good indication of how the different kinds of car perform in terms of range. So in this example, I'm comparing the Aptera Max range with the Tesla Model 3 Long Range and the Peugeot 208, which is currently the best-selling ICE vehicle in Europe. And in no way is this biased. Okay, so maybe the pictures are a little bit biased, but the data's sound, I promise you. So the ICE in this example has a range of 482 real-world kilometers. The Tesla Model 3 has a real-world range of about 530 kilometers, and the Aptera is claiming a real-world range of 1,600 kilometers with the maximum variant and up to 60 kilometers per day additional from the solar cells. So at the start of the month, all cars have great range, but the ICE is continuously losing range every single day. The driver just can't really see it. The Tesla is plugged in overnight, so the range is always refilled overnight and always has max range every morning. And likewise, the Aptera is constantly recharging through the day, so the range is also constantly topped up. By the end of the second week, the ICE range is around 57 miles, 93 kilometers, and the Tesla and Aptera, however, are still going strong. At the end of the second week, the ICE driver sees that their tank is only half full and decides to refill, and then the cycle continues. In fact, if we estimate the average daily range of the ICE, if we assume that most people refill their cars completely when they get to around one third full, this can give us an average of 66% full, which equates to about 318 kilometers or 197 miles for the average ICE range. So in the real world, ICE range is actually much less than people really think it is. So how about clouds? Well, clouds make no difference to the ICE or the Tesla range, but they will make a difference to Aptera if it's not being plugged in overnight. So let's assume a very dark black cloud for the entire week. How would that change the calculation? In my experience with my solar panels, very dark clouds in the middle of the day drop the PV down to about 10% of their peak production, which in Aptera's case is around six kilometers or three and a half miles a daily range for the PV. A week of black skies will then result in this scenario for the average EU commuter. As expected, the Aptera starts to lose around 23 kilometers of range per day, and this is an extreme scenario, but it will happen to most people at least once a year, or maybe even every second week if you live in Scotland. After the clouds depart, however, the PV panels can make up for the loss. They can produce up to 60 kilometers of range per day, but realistically, this is more likely going to be around the 40 to 45 kilometer mark. But even this is more than the commuter range. And after about a week, the Aptera has regained its full range all by itself, all the time maintaining more than 260 kilometers of range for the short distance variant, or 1,460 kilometers of range for the long range variant. Sound too good to be true? Well, that's because it is. To get a full understanding of how Aptera's range is going to look, we need to look at the full year in an average temperate climate such as Middle Europe, which, judging by Aptera's table, lies between zones two and four. So let's say zone three is a good average. For comparison, we can also include data from sunnier locations such as Spain, which is roughly zone six, and maybe an even sunnier location such as San Diego, which I'm calculating as zone 10. We can easily calculate the estimated PV daily power production of the Aptera using good PV simulation software, and this information can then be converted into distance because we already know the consumption rate per kilometer of the Aptera. Unfortunately, to get any kind of realistic result, we must have to do some backwards calculating first based on Aptera's claims of up to 40 miles or 64 kilometers per day in the sunniest locations. So for transparency, my super sunny location, which is zone 10 or 11, is based on San Diego. And then I've calculated backwards from this result and given San Diego the maximum PV distance of 40 miles per day or 64 kilometers. And then I've recalculated backwards from that for the other zones using the PV software to judge how much of a reduction we get in each location. This should give us a reasonably accurate result and a reasonable judgment of what to expect in terms of range for the Aptera in the different zones. So as mentioned earlier, the average EU commuter drives around 29 kilometers per day. This is going to be marked on the charts, but bear in mind that the average US commuter travels around 51 and a half kilometers per day. So you're going to have to factor this into your own calculations if you live in the US. So how do these results look on paper? Well, if we start the year in July with a full battery, then we get a good indication of how the charge depletes over time throughout the year 
into the winter months and then recovers. As you can see, if you live in zone 10, you don't really have much to worry about. In fact, it's probably going to cover all your daily needs if you have the full PV version of the Aptera, and that is even counting for the US commuter distance. In zone 6, however, you soon start to see that there's a dip in range when you get into the winter months. And this is to be expected. There are fewer hours of sun per day, and that's going to affect the overall charge capability of the PV. And by the time you get to zone 3, this is making a major dint in the range of the Aptera. In fact, at some point it is going to run out and you're going to have to recharge at least once probably more like two or three times under real world conditions which don't have optimum charging scenarios. But hey, charging just two or three times per year isn't bad, right? So if you look at these results per month in graph form, it looks something like this. Over the course of the year in Central Europe, Zone 3, the Aptera produces around 25 kilometers per day on average, peaking at about 36.1 kilometers in July and dropping to a low of 11.1 kilometers per day in December. This number is partly due to the high mountains blocking the few hours of light sunlight in the morning and the evening, which were all taken into account during these calculations. In Southern Europe, in Zone 6, without any major shading elements, the Aptera averages around 37 kilometers per day through the year, with a theoretical peak of 47 kilometers in July and a low of about 25 kilometers per day in December. For comparison, in San Diego, Zone 10, the Aptera achieves a yearly average of an astonishing 58 km per day, peaking at 64 km in April and dropping to 46 km in December. All these figures are assuming optimal charging conditions with no overshadowing other than from the terrain. There is, however, a large difference in expected yearly yield from PV depending on where you live. Let's look at it in terms of cost. Using the current cost of electricity per kilowatt hour in Europe and the current price of petrol per litre, we can then calculate the cost per year for each of these three variants. So to calculate this cost, I actually used the ICE data from Germany of how much fuel the average German user uses in litres per year. This is then multiplied by the current cost per litre, and then we get this quite frightening result. Well, frightening at least if you're an ICE user or thinking of buying an ICE vehicle in the coming months. One further point to consider is that if you really don't want to charge your Aptera, you probably don't have to, even in Zone 3. Even in December, if you can find a few sunny days, then all you need to do is not drive your Aptera and let it recharge for a couple of days, and you can mitigate a lot of the lost energy. You could also pre-charge by driving less in the months leading up to darkest months, thus keeping the battery much fuller for the darkest month of the year. So, in conclusion, taking all this into consideration, even with the much lower daily range of the more northern zones, such as Zone 3 or 2, charging up the largest 100 kilowatt hour battery from the Aptera will cost all of 20 euros at the moment, and that will last you for the most of the year. And this is incredibly impressive, generating over 9,000 kilometers of free range over that a year. If you live in San Diego, buying the largest battery would honestly seem a little bit foolish. It's just so unlikely that you would ever need all that range all at once, unless you're going on some major road trips. If you buy the smallest range of Terra, you will definitely have to charge more often, but still only a handful of times per year. In zone 3, I calculated about three charges per year with the smallest 25 kilowatt hour battery, and most of those charges would take place in November and January and March. Two for the 40 kilowatt hour in November and January, and once only for the 60 kilowatt hour in December, and also once for the 100 kilowatt hour in January. There are large assumptions made during these calculations. Firstly, that the Aptella always has a sunny location to recharge, and second, that the car is used every day for 29 kilometers. But this obviously changes dramatically if you commute a very long distance or you live in a very dark part of the world. You have to take all this into account, but for most people, charging not very often is a very real possibility, and never charge is also a real possibility for a lot of people. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, please pop them in the comment section below. If you're interested in buying an Aptera, then please check out my link below. There's a referral code, and you'll get some money off your deposit. Thanks, and I hope to see you next time. I'm also shilling for NordVPN, so if you're looking to increase your internet security, or maybe you're just trying to access some websites from your home country, then look no further than the NordVPN. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. They're one of the best VPN services on the web, so check them out in the link below.